Asheville, North Carolina. And here with? Uh, I'm Jim Hart. Uh, I'm the other, other co-founder of uh, um, Lionfish University. I'm coming to you by way of California, very rainy, via New York. Uh, and we're glad to be here today to talk about um, the invasive species of lionfish. So uh, it's been said that the lionfish invasion is the greatest ecological disaster that no one's ever heard of. Maybe you've heard of lionfish, but hopefully today we can uh, give you some facts and some thoughts that uh, that will make you understand uh, the invasion and also what we can do to stop it. So we'll talk a little bit today about what is Lionfish University and also about the invasive lionfish. And how many of you have heard about the lionfish invasion? Okay. Let us hear from you. Let us. All right, we've got. Hear from you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Okay. All right. Well, um, as Jim said, it is arguably one of the worst marine invasions in history that probably a lot of people have never heard of. So we'll give you some general information today about it. Um, what we do at Lionfish University is, as you see on the slide there, it's Lionfish University, education, research, and awareness about the invasion. And um, we have started in 2012 just as a grassroots organization with people who were interested in saving the ocean. And why should we even be concerned about saving the ocean? I mean, I live in a landlocked area here in Asheville, North Carolina, but the ocean is really important for so many things. There are so many medicines that are derived from the ocean. We get so much food sources from the ocean and it, it um, is just a really important source of oxygen as well. So even if you don't live anywhere near the ocean, it is a really important thing to be aware of. Um, go over to our next slide here. Uh, one of the questions we're often asked is, um, they're so, the lionfish are so beautiful to look at. They're such an exotic fish. Why are they bad? What's wrong? What, what is it so terrible about them? Uh, and we have three words from Alex Fogg, who is one of the leading lionfish experts in, uh, in the world and also a big lionfish hunter. Lionfish are bad. That's his message about lionfish. We're also going to find out they're good to eat. Um, very good to eat. But what makes them so bad? They're so beautiful. We also have people say, why do you want to kill them? Why do you want to take them off the reef? Why do you want to spear them? Why do you want to trap them? Uh, they're, they're, they're too beautiful to, to be bad. So Stacy will show you the slide map on why they're bad. And you probably have all seen these in various aquariums, especially if you're interested in aquariums. And they, they do have some problems, which we'll discuss. So here is where partially lionfish are invasive and it's it's gotten to be a gigantic problem they now are invaded from as far north as new york city where they cannot overwinter however as far north as north carolina throughout the western atlantic the gulf of mexico down through the caribbean central america and down as far as brazil and and yes where you are in gulfport Mississippi, you do have invasive lionfish. They may not be very evident, especially if you're in shallow water swimming, but they are out farther and they are deeper. And the very first invasive lionfish showed up off the coast of Dania Beach, Florida in 1985. And then it proceeded to procreate out of control. It took a few years for that to happen, but you can see how widespread this, this is now. Now, two years ago, we were contacted by um, a marine biologist working out of Turkey. Uh, the Mediterranean was suddenly being has suddenly been overrun with lionfish, uh, beginning uh, about ten years ago, and they began spreading through the Suez Canal, and now they've they've spread west all through the Mediterranean, which is virtually fished out anyway. Uh, and the lionfish are not not helping because they're 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 breeding and and um, uh, spreading unchecked. The rules and regulations of all the various countries in the Mediterranean don't permit necessarily permit spearing of lionfish. They don't permit spearing fish on scuba gear. They don't allow you to sell the lionfish. There's a lot of restrictions and a lot of complications that we're trying to unravel with a group of um, of marine biologists from the U.S. and throughout the Mediterranean to 
to uh, uh, neutralize the, uh, the all the regulations, which are basically allowing the lionfish to procreate and expand and devastate the native uh, fish life. Uh, we just published a paper uh, last year on on uh, uh, best practices to control the lionfish invasion with an international group of scientists that came together through lionfish university. This is what happens when it goes unchecked. Uh, and uh, hopefully some of the guidelines that we've implemented in the U.S. and the Caribbean, the Western Atlantic, will help them uh, in the Mediterranean. So, you know, part of why these fish are so bad is they just reproduce unbelievably. And they are sort of the buffet busters of the reefs. They also eat just everything they can get in their mouth. It's two thirds their size or less. And they eat native reef fish, they eat sharks, they eat octopus, they eat crustaceans, you name it. They just have a generalist diet, just anything they can fit in their mouth. And they produce this enormous quantity of eggs. Every three to four days, the females produce about 30 to 40,000 eggs. And there's really nothing that eats those eggs that are contained in this gelatinous, very distasteful mass. And also, there is not much that does eat live lionfish. There is some evidence that they are eaten by some predators. And in fact, Jim took a video back in 2015 and Little came in of the first documented case of a grouper eating a lionfish live and it ate it. And you can see that on our YouTube channel and uh, it's under the name Storyful. And you'll see this amazing video. It's now got has over 2 million views at this point, but there is more and more evidence that predators are catching on, but it's slow and it's definitely not enough to stop this invasion. And what you see in that yellow circle there on that map is where the lionfish are projected to go south eventually. And the only thing that really stops them is water that's cold enough that they cannot in, survive in it. They can survive in almost fresh water, amazingly enough. So cold is really the only thing that stops them. And you can see how far south they're, they're going to eventually get. And that may change though with global warming as our oceans do warm, they'll be able to go farther south and farther north. And another effect of global warming are hurricanes and huge storms. They're more frequent and they're larger. And when there are especially hurricanes, they produce a super highway for lionfish to spread. They're normally quite sedate. They don't move around much at all. So it kind of takes something like a large storm to get them moving very far. So um, you can you can definitely bet they're gonna be spreading a lot farther than they normally are right now. There's some other facts to share that uh, that uh, Stacy uh, was was leading you to. One, the lionfish can eat um, 30 times its normal size after a meal. Like they're somewhat kind of large over 30 times their size. So they literally fill themselves up with small reef fish. 80% of the small reef fish will disappear from a reef in a short time after the lionfish is introduced. Uh, we've seen this happen uh, throughout the Caribbean in the very beginning of this invasion. Yes, they are venomous. They are not poisonous. They are venomous. They, they sting you like like a, like a wasp or something. It, it's not it's not poison like for coming from a um, a snake or, or something that that has the glands. Once you're stung, um, uh, it can be very painful and can send you to the hospital. Uh, but so far, there have been no deaths from lionfish stings. But it is one of the things that protects them. Um, you know how many eggs they lay now. And there are no natural predators. Say she told you about the YouTube video that we shot some years ago. They don't have any natural predators. We were the main predator they had. Uh, and you're going to find out now how they were introduced uh, into the Caribbean. And um, what they're doing to damage the reefs is killing the juvenile fish that grow up and tend to the algae on the reef. And once that algae takes over the reef, the reef dies the juvenile fish don't grow up to be um, uh, adults, uh, and you begin to be overrun by lionfish. Um, it's sort of the perfect storm, the perfect invader. They are the alien. And then what in the world can we do about these invasive fish? So at this point, really, we have to be the predator with lionfish. So that involves largely calling them individually, meaning sparing them. 
And at this, they do not school like a like tuna wood, for example, that can be netted in large quantities. So they have to be speared individually. And uh, they are venomous, as Carly was referring to. They're not poisonous, though. So as she was saying, the flesh of the lionfish is perfectly fine once those venomous spines are removed. But it does make removal really difficult. It's slow going, and people can get stung. And we'll tell you a little bit later about some other uh, control methods that are are in the works to help with that problem. But there are things like um, some robotic uh, machines, underwater machines that are being tested to see if those can be used to control lionfish. Um, Scott Ganello, he's gonna be doing a talk today at 1.30 your time. And he's gonna be talking about the submarine that he's involved in. Yeah, that, a yellow submarine. Uh, yes, yeah, a yellow submarine. Uh, lionfish can survive down to a thousand feet. So obviously divers can only go to around 100, 120 feet. So he'll be telling you some information about some control at, at deeper areas. Um, they do taste great, as Carly was saying earlier. Um, you can eat them to beat them. They're a fabulous tasting fish. And where you are in your area and along the Gulf Coast, you can find restaurants that do have lionfish. So if you get the opportunity, if you're a fish eater, try them and that is a, a big help to controlling them. And then you can also donate to organizations that help with the problem, like Lionfish University and Lionfish Central, like I was talking about Scott Canello. He's very dedicated to the, the cause. Uh, lionfishdivers.com, that was an organization started by one of our field reporters. We'll, I'll be talking about that in a little bit. And he um, is just a maniac controlling the lionfish invasion takes lots of trips and, and calls them. So even if you don't live on the water, you can still dive by taking trips and controlling them if you're interested in that. And then there's also Reef Environmental Education Foundation, and they have been around more than 20 years, and they have gotten started very early on with programs controlling the lionfish invasion. Um, what we do at Lionfish University for, is to raise awareness. When Stacy and I first started um, getting involved in lionfish, um, I'm a screenwriter and uh, by trade, and and I was going to write a big horror film about giant lionfish coming and spearing people with their venomous spines and you know the size of a Volkswagen bus or something. And we found out that nobody knew what a lionfish was um, when I would go to uh, and try to sell the story. What's a lionfish? So our first mandate was awareness. We always have tried to appear at the DEMA show, the dive shows where we present our lionfish dip, which is really great to eat. We develop lionfish cookbooks. Um, we have um, done cooking shows. We've um, uh, participated in uh, uh, Seafood Watch um, in Washington, D.C. Um, and the whole idea is to, is to make the public aware of this problem and how they can help. You see that in the middle. That's the, one of the first calls we did in uh, uh, Little Cayman uh, back when we first started Landfish University. And we also do a series of PSA films that are instructional to um, the landfish community on, on, on how to call safely. So I think we have one of those to show you. Yeah, we're going to show you one. And because of Jim's background, he was rather modest there. He's a rather famous uh, screenwriter. You may have seen some of his films like Contact, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, August Rush, uh, many, many other films. Um, so here is just one. This is one that we did as a series of four films about calling uh, safety tips. And this one's good. It gives you a little flavor of what, if you do decide to learn to call lionfish, what's involved. We do recommend a safety course, and there are quite a few you can take around near, you know, uh, your area probably has one in Florida for sure. Um, and let me run this. Also some ge good general information in this film. Lionfish have been decimating reef ecosystems across the Western Atlantic. It may be among the most invasive marine species in history. Join the fight and learn from marine biologists and culling experts how to safely hunt lionfish and help combat this deadly invader. But before you take a giant stride into the deep blue to start hunting, 
Watch Lionfish University's video series. Then make your first dive with an experienced lionfish club. Even if you're a spearfishing expert, lionfish demand extra precautions because their spines deliver a painful sting that can send you to the hospital if you're not careful. The most important rule while hunting lionfish is that dive safety comes first. This means diving with a buddy who will keep an eye on you and watch for predators when you're focused on spearing. Lionfish hang out on and under ledges or in holes, so it's easy for loose hoses to get caught. In addition to standard scuba gear, you'll need special equipment to remove and hold lionfish. This containment device is puncture resistant to prevent the venomous spines from poking you. There are many lionfish containment devices for recreational and commercial use. Some are made with a hard body like PVC or plastic pipe, while others consist of puncture resistant fabrics. Test different containment devices before your first hunt to find one you're comfortable with underwater. Containment devices require maintenance. Be sure yours is in optimal working order before the hunt. Containment devices also deter predators like sharks and moray eels from stealing your prized catch and associating divers with a food delivery service. Next step, choosing a pole spear that's made for lionfish removal. There are many to choose from, so select one that works best for you. Pole spears do require maintenance. Always make sure the band is in optimal working order to make proper use of the sling. If it isn't, replace it with a new one. One trick is to have two bands on a pole spear in case one snaps while hunting. Make sure your pole spear has a paralyzer tip with at least three tines. This holds the lionfish more securely and minimizes the potential of the fish riding up the spear and stinging you as you transfer it to a container. Beginning hunters should have at least one barbed tine to hold the fish on the spear. Use your spear in accordance with local rules and regulations and experience level. Puncture resistant gloves reduce the potential for being stuck and can reduce the severity of a sting. Choose gloves that also allow a firm grip on the pole spear when in shooting mode. In addition to a standard first aid dive kit, you'll need a sting kit. Take a thermos of hot water and several reusable heat packs. Heat can denature the protein in the venom that causes pain. And be sure to include pain relievers like Tylenol and Aleve and antihistamines like Benadryl and Claritin. These help with swelling as well as pain. Now that we've covered the basics on land, you're ready for an adventure in the big blue. You're on your way to earning a degree in lionfish hunting from Lionfish University. And always remember this, hunters and divers are stewards of the oceans who are helping the marine environment by removing lionfish. But we have to do it without harming anything else. So take only lionfish and leave only your bubbles. Don't miss the hunt. The next episode in our I'm series from Lionfish. This right here, I do want to point out one thing. If you are currently a lionfish hunter or think that's something you might be interested in, when you saw that eel approaching the diver, that's kind of a big thing that um, scientists and and organizations do caution about: is do not feed lionfish to predators. That was something that was done quite a while back, and it just created a lot of aggressive predator so just put them in your containment unit and carry on uh, probably one of the uh, most important things when we did at landfish university was um, the beginning of the funding for research projects such as the the, the dr steve diddings um, trap the purse trap um, this was designed uh, to be able to trap lionfish at depths where, where recreational divers can't dive deeper. Also 24 seven, if the trap is in the water 24 seven, instead of one diver with one spear taking off one lionfish at a time, we have a series of traps that can actually cool. capture the fish without having to be a diver. Uh, there's basically a trap that opens on the bottom of the, of the ocean floor. The lionfish are attracted to structures. So even a piece of home depot, you know, garden fence in the middle attracts them. Uh, and when the lionfish have collected, 
the trap is harvested just by closing it up like a purse. Uh, and you can stack many of these traps on a boat. Commercial fishermen can trap the landfish uh, and make money selling them. Uh, you, it will never replace the thrill of going on the hunt and diving with a sphere, but it does turn it into more of a commercial way of creating a sustainable market for these fish. And you can't trap enough of them. You can't kill enough of them. You can't harvest enough of them. You can't eat enough of them. They're never going to be an endangered species, but they are endangering other species. So we're real proud of the fact that we started the research project for the getting trap, which is now um, uh, has a very large grant from Kennedy Salt installing tested in deep waters in the Carolinas and in the Florida waters. Um, and hopefully there'll be a design now that can be given away practically and said they're cheap to make uh, 150 bucks to, to, to fishermen and expand the collection of landfish uh, off the reef. Now, something else that we created was called a, a field reporter system. And this was intended to get volunteers to share their information from one part of the invaded area to another so that we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. Things like those containment units and safety practices and what's going on with the invasion. There's so many twists and turns with it. So we have many, many volunteers throughout the invaded area. And in fact, uh, Roger Muller is one of our field reporters who started that lionfishdivers.com that I was telling you about. So um, if, if any of you are divers and would be interested in being a field reporter, you can contact us. I'll give you some contact information at the end and uh, contact me. I can tell you more information about it, but it's a great way for people to share information. And finally, um, for us, uh, there's a silver lining in, 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 this in this invasion, and it has to do with the relationships that we've made purely because of the lionfish invasion. People I never would have met in a million years had it not been for the lionfish invasion that now have formed these lasting relationships that you know probably will last for, for, for the decades to come. And we did a little film called The Silver Lining, and it's self-explanatory, and I hope you see the kind of community that's built up around this. Disasters often come with silver linings, and this one is no exception. The lionfish invasion created a community of new friends and colleagues that differ in countless ways, but share a mutual interest and respect for the lionfish threat and the need to control it to protect the places we love. For some people, their lives changed with the invasion. Some created businesses building and selling culling gear or jewelry made from lionfish. Many divers earn money hunting and selling lionfish to restaurants and wholesalers. Cookbooks were written, shirts printed, tasty dips developed, new traps invented, and beautiful lionfish art inspired. Maybe your life will change. Maybe it already has. How many new friends show up in pictures from your lionfish adventures? We all do our part, whether it's research, organizing, culling, capitalizing, or just eating and all the while enriching each other's lives. Welcome to the force. But most of all, thank you for doing your part to fight the lionfish invasion. We come to the end of our presentation. Uh, here's some contact information for Lionfish University. Uh, our website is lionfishuniversity.org and our email is lionfishu at gmail.com. Um, there was a picture of our, our new lionfish cookbook. If anybody's interested in that, you can email us at that, that email lionfishu at gmail.com. The cookbooks are $20 and it all goes to help our ocean conservation work. We're also on Facebook and Instagram at Lionfish University. Um, does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Carly. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you for everybody for coming. Thank you, Jim. I know you got to hop off. Does anybody in the audience have any questions for Stacy from Lionfish University? Anyone? <laughs> One of the ways that we can help to reduce the lionfish population is by consuming them. Is there a way that we is there anywhere where we can, you know, go and find them? Yeah. Commercially? 
Um, did you say where you could buy them? Yes, they're uh, asking if there are any locations that we know of that will sell by There are not very many actually, but at this point, but there are restaurants that do sell them on their menus. Um, that's just something you'd have to find individually in your area. They kind of come and go since they are hard to hard to you know get a constant supply of them. So a restaurant might carry it and then might not be able to have it. So uh, we actually don't have a, a list of where they are because it changes so rapidly. Oh, we're not. Oh, Jim, you're on mute. mute. And let's mention Anthony and, and Netless Catch, who actually will ship landfish to your door. Um, it's called Netless Catch. Uh, Anthony, a young young entrepreneur that we've worked with, has started a um, a supply of uh, landfish. He's supplying some restaurants in Florida, like the Castaways and the Keys, uh, and he will ship landfish fillets to your door. Uh, they're not cheap, but you are in in your own way, uh, by eating the landfish, you're actually committing an act of conservation. Mm -hmm. And there is another group called Inversa in Florida that will ship lionfish. Um, if someone's interested, you could email us at lionfishu and I can get that information for you. All right, any other questions from the audience? All right, Jim and Stacey, thank you thank so you. much for your presentation today. Nice. All right, and thank you guys. Thank and don't forget too. Scott Ganello and the Yellow Submarine. He's uh, coming on, I think, shortly after us. So uh, thank you all, all for participating. Thank you, Carly. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jim. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming out for our lionfish presentation today. If y'all haven't already had the chance to run by the Lionfish University and Lionfish Central Table, it is located right outside of our shark window on the first floor of Aquatic Wonders.